Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And today's video is about Luminar Neo and specifically seven different things that you can do to prepare for the upcoming release of Luminar Neo. And to be clear, no, I don't have an exact release date. They've indicated that it will be in February, um, but I don't have an exact date. I'm guessing the second half of February simply because February is getting really close and I don't have an exact date yet. So don't ask because I don't know, uh, but it is coming and it's coming soon. And I think there are some things that you can and may want to do in order to prepare for Neo. Now, the first thing or tip number one is basically, and this is something that I like to do anyway, but tip number one is take photos of a variety of subjects. The reason I bring that up is um, if you've been here before and watched my videos, you know I love to shoot landscapes and cityscapes and street scenes and street photography and things like that. I don't shoot a lot of portraits, but over the last year or so with all the great tools in Luminar AI for editing portraits, it's gotten me a bit more interested in that. And so I'm continuing to try to build out my practice, if you will, around taking portraits. It's not something that I ever really anticipate doing for hire, but it's something I want to be better at. And the reason why is because there are so many great tools in Luminar AI today, and there are going to be those same tools in Luminar Neo plus new ones like portrait background removal. And so for me, taking more portraits gives me more uh, different kind of variety of photos to practice with. And that's really the key is if you have a wide variety of types of photos, that gives you the ability to really go in and use lots of different parts of Luminar Neo and learn the product, which is really what the goal is. And so for me, you know, I take photos like this at different events and I'm gonna be able to go in and do edits around them, maybe replace the background on them, things like that. The point is stretch yourself, and this is really just good practice anyway, because you love photography like I do, but it's great to be able to practice on different types of subject matter to become more well-rounded, more knowledgeable, and more experienced with all those different kinds of things. Personally, I think it's a great way to learn a product, to try lots of different subject matter, and edit those different subject matter photos, in the product. So that's tip number one, take lots of different types of photos in order to be able to use all the different tools in Neo so that you can learn it really well. Tip number two is to get organized. And what I mean by that is to consolidate and collapse and to bring together all the different files that you may have scattered on hard drives all over the house or whatever. I am incredibly guilty of that over the last few years. I've had photos on this hard drive and a couple of others like it. I've had them on this hard drive, it actually says Luminar Library there. I had like my Luminar 3 or Luminar 4 library on there. I've had them on this hard drive, which was a, a subset of my overall collection of photos, and I was doing some edits there. And now, as you can see here, I've got this 18 terabyte drive, which is a G drive, which I just absolutely love, and I've collapsed all my photos from everywhere onto this one drive. So basically, everything's in one place. Now, I think this is good advice whether you're gonna use Luminar Neo as your catalog or not. So really, regardless of whether you use Lightroom or On One or some other product as your catalog, it makes sense to just get everything in one place. And honestly, it can be a lot of work. I've gone through and collected miscellaneous archives and things like that, but in my photos, I've got them kind of organized, and this is the second piece of that. The first piece is get it all in the same place. Second piece of that tip is really just to make sure that you organize them in a way that makes sense to you. So for me, I organize by location and date or subject matters. So for me, I live in Austin, so I've got countless folders of photos that I've gone downtown or different places around Austin and taken photos, and I collect or, or organize and collapse those all together in a similar folder. Same with Europe, where it's a little bit easier to do it by location, where I, you know, I went to Amsterdam a couple of different times, and I just do it by location and then by date all of these in a bigger folder uh, for Europe. And so I do that for sections of the world. I've mostly been around the US and in Europe. So for the US, I've done a similar thing where I have the location and the date. It doesn't matter if you use this. A lot of people like to organize by year and then by month and things like that. I'm not saying my way is the way to go. I'm saying it makes a lot of sense to get them all together and then to get them organized in a way that makes sense to you so that when you go and f uh, are looking for a photo, you can find them easily, which also leads me to a, another sub bullet of this, which is I use Exire Photo, which is great at keywording and things like that. I'll put a link to a video up there about it. But now that I've got all my files and photos in one place on one drive, I can go stick Exire on top of this 
and do keywording and really get organized so that my search results can be immediate across the entire library. So that's tip number two, get organized. Okay, tip number three is to learn about layers. You may recall layers were in Luminar 4, were not in Luminar AI. A lot of people were upset about that. And guess what? Layers are coming back into Luminar Neo. So this is a great time if either you're new to Luminar and have never used layers before, or if it's been a while and you're a little rusty, this is a great time to dive in and learn about layers. I've got a couple of different videos that may come in handy and I'll put links to them, but this is a video about Luminar 4 and the power of layers. And then here's a video from my Luminar 4 tutorial series, which is all about layers. To be clear, you don't have to watch my videos. It's great if you do, I appreciate it. And these videos are specific to Luminar 4, which is gonna have a little bit of a similar feel, I think, to Luminar Neo. But like I said, you don't have to watch my videos, but I recommend if you're rusty or you just never use them, now's a great time to learn about them because they're coming and they give you a lot of powerful editing flexibility that I think you may wanna take advantage of when Luminar Neo gets here. So take this next couple of weeks or whatever it is until we get Luminar Neo, brush up on layers or learn about layers, dive in, watch YouTube, read tutorials, experiment. If you have other products that have layers capability and you haven't done it before, just experiment. You're not gonna break anything, but learn about how to do it because it does give you a lot of powerful flexibility. So that's tip number three, learn about layers. Now tip number four is to learn about masking. There's a lot of powerful masking capability that will be in Neo. And yes, they are coming out with Mask AI that I believe will be in a future update later this spring. I don't know an exact date, but I don't believe Mask AI is gonna be available at launch, but I think it's in the first free update. Regardless, masking is a powerful editing technique as well, and you can do that in Luminar AI and lots of other products. So if you're not familiar with what masking is or why you should use it or when or how or any of those kind of things, Now's a great time to brush up on masking. I've got this video here that really explains in depth how masking works. This is a Luminar AI tutorial. You may wanna check that out because I walk through and explain visually, as you can see here, about how it works. So my point is brush up on masking, get familiar with it. And by the way, masking comes in really handy when you're using layers as well. Now again, mask AI is coming, but it won't be out at launch. I think it's really useful to understand and to get practice with masking tools prior to the AI mask, mask AI, uh, as it's technically called, coming out because you'll better understand, I think, how things operate, how to use them, why, when, all that stuff, as I've already said. So brush up on masking, that's tip number four. Tip number five, and this kind of goes along with tip number two, and that is don't just get your files and photos organized into one place, but also consider getting all of your other creative assets organized and in one place. What I'm talking about here is skies for automatic sky replacement, LUTs if you use them in your editing, textures, things like that as well. So I actually keep a folder on my desktop that has all of these creative assets in it. I have a sky folder, various skies that I've gotten from Luminar and On One, and of course my own sky pack that I've created, as well as my friend Matt Seuss, I have his sky pack. I have all of that on my desktop, so it's quick and easy access. I've also got a texture and LUT folder that I've created on my desktop. Again, these are textures I've acquired over the years, textures I've created and sell on my website, LUTs that I create and sell on my website, as well as free LUTs I've picked up over the years. My point is, I think you wanna have all these creative assets handy simply because if you recall, as I said in tip number three, layers is coming back and you're gonna have the capability to do a lot of creative things with layers, which may involve using LUTs and textures and various overlays, things like that. So while some of these tools are gonna to be automatic and you, like sky replacement, so you won't have to use layers for that, there are plenty of overlay options when you have layers that you can do a lot of creative composite sort of work. And while we'll cover those in future demonstration videos, I think it's highly important to get organized and get all that stuff together in one place where you have ready access to it. I choose to keep it or to keep these things on my desktop in a couple of folders. So that's tip number five, organize and consolidate your textures, your skies, your LUTs, any kind of overlay or creative assets that you might be using in your edits. Tip number six is to edit photos in Luminar AI. You may already have Luminar AI from the past or maybe you picked it up in a bundle with Luminar Neo and maybe you thought if you got that bundle and had never used it before, maybe you thought, I'm not gonna use Luminar AI because Luminar Neo is coming and I'd rather use that because it's new and it's got more cool stuff in it. I personally think 
that using Luminar AI now is going to help you more quickly get up to speed in Luminar Neo. The reason why is very similar interface. A lot of the tools and filters in Luminar AI are coming over to Luminar Neo, which means all of your knowledge in Luminar AI is going to transfer over to Luminar Neo. Photo like this, I could come in and do things like with Accent AI or, you know, whatever it is, maybe bump up some of the vibrance, something like that. I don't know, maybe I'll go into landscape and add some golden hour. I'm making it up. I don't have a plan for this photo. I'm just showing that, you know, you've got tools here that you may or may not be familiar with, but I think it's useful to get familiar with them. But when you come over to Luminar Neo, you're going to find similar tools exist, right? So here's Accent AI. Here's Color, so I could do a little bit of Vibrance. Here's Landscape, so I can go in and get Golden Hour and bump that up. All those tools are coming over. So familiar look and feel. Your knowledge will transfer. And I think that sets you up for a quick start with Luminar Neo because you already know how to use a large portion of the filters that are going to be in Neo. So if you've had Luminar AI in the past and have used it, keep using it. That's going to carry over. And if you picked it up as part of the bundle with the pre-order with Luminar Neo and haven't used it yet, I recommend getting in and starting and playing around simply because that knowledge will come with you. And tip number seven is just to be open-minded and get ready to have fun simply because be open-minded because things are going to be different. You can see the UI, although it's very familiar, some things are a little bit different. That may take some getting used to, and sometimes you might be looking for something that you can't find, and it gets a little frustrating. It's understandable. We all go through that when we're adapting or adopting a new tool. But like I said, your knowledge from Luminar AI will come over and will help you. Be open-minded. Things are going to be different. Things might be located in different places. All the features at launch are not going to be there, and that's okay. We're going to get everything that they've been talking about. It's going to be really powerful. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I think just be open-minded. Embrace the change. Feel free to dive in and have a lot of fun editing. And of course, I'm going to be here making tutorials about it so that you can come here every day, every week, whatever it is that I'm doing, and check out my videos. If you're interested, if not, check out somebody else's. The point is there's going to be a lot of education out there around Luminar Neo. We're here to help to make this transition easy for you, but just go into it with an open mind. Look forward to having fun. I know I'm going to be having a lot of fun with it, and I can't wait to keep making tutorial videos about Luminar Neo. I already know it's going to be the product that I use the most. So that's it for my seven tips to help you get prepared for Luminar Neo. Hope it gives you some things to think about. I appreciate you watching, my friends. I'll be back soon with more Luminar Neo videos. And until then, take care of yourselves and adios.